Hello everybody, welcome back into another video. If you don't know me, my name is Sin and I am happy you are here. We are back with more Predecessor. This is going to be another sponsored video, so thank you to Omita for that. We're jumping back into Predecessor. Now, first episode was me just getting to know the game, getting to understand what a MOBA was and what my purpose was. However, I did not properly do my research. And after finishing that first episode and posting it, I decided I was going to do a little bit more research into the mechanics of MOBA, especially how to play the game successfully. And I've learned there's a lot of rules, uh, rules that I have taken notes on, to be completely honest, because there were many a thing that I was unaware of jumping into Predecessor for the very first time that are part of course for other MOBA games, but I just wasn't aware of these mechanics. So I was not very super successful in playing the first time around, even though I had a lot of fun. And I thought when I jumped into the second episode that it was just going to be me testing out characters that I haven't gotten to try yet and seeing what style I wanted to play as. There's a lot more to it than that, as I'm sure most of you MOBA players know, but I was not privy to. First off, um, the classes are a lot more specific than what I originally thought. So there are five classes, um, and choosing one does determine exactly what your role is and where you are supposed to be on the map. And that is a key element to your success. You're not supposed to just jump all over the map willy nilly the way that I did. So I have been actually studying, I took notes, and what I'm going to be doing for this episode is testing out one character from each of the five categories. I'm going to be taking them through the AI battle simulator and playing them through that way to really test out how I like these types of characters when I am playing them properly. So we're going to be playing someone on the off lane, the mid lane, a jungle character. I'm just now learning what that is and why it's important and why I shouldn't have had Revenant in the jungle the way that I did. A carry, which is what Revenant is, and then a support character. So I am going to be playing through these five characters. I'm going to be doing it properly this time based on the notes that I took on how to play these characters and where they're supposed to be on the map and what their job is. And then once I have settled on what kind of character I actually want to play based off of, you know, playing them by their proper mechanics, then I'm going to jump into a PvP match with the characters that I'm most comfortable with. Will it go well? Probably not, but that is part of the fun. So this time around, it's probably going to be a little bit of a longer episode because I do want to go through the five categories and really learn these characters for myself and uh, see where that gets us from playing the game properly. So let's go ahead and jump into it. We're going to be starting with the character that I think I enjoy the most, which is a carrier. Alrighty, as mentioned previously, I am going to be jumping into carriers first. Now, my boy Revenant is a carrier. However, when I look at his profile on the predecessor website, he apparently is an expert level character, and I am not an expert level player. So, I may jump over to Murdoch here, because Murdoch is labeled as a beginner character for players. So, I'm going to be running another... Oh, nope, 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 cancel that. I'm going to be running another player versus AI, and I'm going to be running it with our boy there. All right, we are going to be choosing Carrie because that is exactly what our boy is. And it's interesting that I gravitated towards carriers first because they do essentially work as DPSs. So very heavy damage, but they're also easy to kill. So very glass cannons, if you will. But we're still, we're still gonna give our boy a try. All right, I believe I'm gonna go with the marksman crest here. So that is exactly what I'm going to be doing. And one thing I have learned is that there are specific types of characters that go into this area here that I've learned is called the jungle, and that area is not for me. 
So I'm going to be heading off here, staying away from the mid lane. That is something we will chat about later. That's something I've also learned about. I'm going to follow Decker here over to the side. So the first time that I played Carrie, I started off in the right place because literally the game tells you where to start and then slowly but surely I got away from my objective. But now that I understand where I'm supposed to be as a carry, we will have a little bit more success or things will go a little bit more smoothly than they did that first time around. So as carry, I've learned that my main goal is to stay at least in the beginning of this round with my duo partner in this off lane alongside my partner. The other off lane is for the off lane character build, the solo character. They're off on their own. They're doing their own thing. But as a carry, we're a DPS. We're a glass cannon. We kill easily, but we're also easily killed. So we do try to stay off with our duo partner. And one thing that I have learned would have been beneficial to me, but I just learned about it after I recorded this video to be completely honest is that one of my main goals would have been to get that gold buff you can see it off in the map if you look at the map and then you look at the far left hand corner there is a tiny little gold dot that is over there that is a gold buff that myself my partner and then the opposing duos team would have been fighting over luckily this was against the ai because i'm sure if i was playing against p another player in pvp they would have went after that gold buff and it is not detrimental but important i have learned to control that gold buff and early on in the game it is just really imperative to focus on your lane and farm and make sure that you are building up your character, you're getting the most bang for your buck, you're able to unlock the abilities that you like loot using to their best degree because as the game goes on, the other characters are also upgrading or the other players are also upgrading their character. And you wanna make sure you can go toe to toe with them while also protecting yourself and protecting your team. So really here in this first segment, you want to be pushing the towers, of course. You want to be putting pressure. That way you're keeping your enemy back if you can. But you're also wanting to farm in order to build your own character. That way the great push that will ho hopefully come later for your team is a little bit easier. You're able to contribute a little bit more. As you can see, I'm still getting used to this idea of falling back. Once again, I see myself as cannon fodder, which may or may not play well, and there went my death to the tower, may or may not play well for a DPS because I like chasing people down, especially when I have my DPS, my carry, a little bit more upgraded. I like chasing people down, especially when they try to run away when they're at low health. And that leads me into precarious situations that are hard for me to get myself out of. But that is how I like playing this game. I'm a little bit selfish when it comes to that. So it is something that I'm still very much adapting to this idea of backing off when necessary. And here you can see me moving a little bit further into the mid lane, which honestly is not something I would probably do in a live match because I did feel comfortable leaving my left lane, but only because this being against the AI, there's not complex thought and strategy that's going into this. So if I was playing PVP, I likely would have stayed in my lane, at least to support my partner as we were heading towards the inhibitor. But in this mid lane here, they had worked down one of the towers and now we're working down the second tower. So I felt comfortable coming this way, but largely only because the AI was involved. I really don't think I would have gone for the strategy had there been people involved. And that's kind of one of the fun things about playing against the AI, if I'm gonna be completely honest, is wondering to yourself, would I do this if these were real competitors? And often I find myself thinking, no, I would not. 
So this is going to be my final push playing as a Murdoch here. I did really enjoy his abilities. I didn't showcase a lot of them. He's not necessarily my favorite. I did enjoy playing Revenant a lot more and I think that's why I'm not really keen on showing his gameplay because I didn't really do too well with it to be completely honest. But Revenant definitely was more of a heavy hitting carry it felt like i just felt like i was more of a menace playing as revenant rather than murdoch even though i was playing murdoch more correctly but i did end up missing revenant a little bit but maybe that is why revenant is considered an expert character is because he does feel a little bit more difficult to manipulate but also in that same vein a little bit more rewarding and this is one of the sad parts about dying up in enemy territory is that they are going to be finishing off the core without me so i did not get to see the end of this match but i am happy to say that as by playing carry correctly I do feel like I added a little bit more to that match than I had previously playing against the AI. So while I really don't think I will call on Murdoch in the future, I don't think he'll be one of my chosen heroes. I was fairly happy with the way this match played out as I'm still learning how to play a proper carry. All right, for this next attempt, I am going to be giving the off lane a shot. These are going to be my solo characters. So I am supposed to have a lane entirely to myself that I will be defending. And that's a little bit scary, but that is what these characters were built for. So I'm very excited to be testing this one out. I did take a little bit of a look around the predecessor website, so I do have some idea of which characters are considered beginner characters. Um, Shinbi actually is an advanced character, which I kind of want to give a go. I know Feng Mao, Greystone, and Grux are beginners. And I believe Sevrog is also an advanced. But I want to try Shinbi. I think with my limited knowledge of the mechanics and this game, I'm ready to try an advanced character. So I'm going to do that for better or for worse. All right, jumping into this, we are going to be choosing the Magician Crest. That just seems like what is going to work best for Shinbi. And we are going to go with the right click, which is honestly just what I have gotten most comfortable doing right off the bat is the right click. I don't know, it just makes the most sense to my brain because normally the right click is an attack unless you are playing a support character. So it's just nice to have left and right click together. That way I can spam them if I get stressed out. So if you're wondering why I go for those first, that, that's exactly why I do it. That way I can do that if I get stressed out. So we're gonna be going to the right lane. We do have this lane to ourselves. So this is going to be fairly interesting, even though it is only against the AI. This also has a buff zone here over on the map as well, that if you are playing against other players, you do want to try to control this buff as much as possible. Once again, it's not detrimental. It's not game breaking if you don't get the buff but it's definitely going to help out in the long run with pushing back enemy lines and making sure they stay back. One thing I immediately noticed about playing an offlaner is that going from a carry to an offlaner just feels so weird. I don't know if this is normal, part of course, but it definitely seems like carries normally have something that they throw, something they shoot. They seem like they have a little bit more of a range in their attacks, Whereas Shimbi is definitely up close and personal. And see, there's my bad habit right there of chasing chasing people down because I can and because I'm a bully. So that habit has not helped me at all. It just makes me feel better. But going into the off lane did feel a little bit weird at first because now I'm a little bit more up close and personal than what I have been in the past and what I was originally comfortable with. And it definitely was something to adapt to as time went on. As I was able to level Shinbi, get her abilities where I wanted them, and she started to hit a little bit harder basically, I got a lot more comfortable playing as Shinbi and learning what her abilities do and which of them I really enjoy. So it really is just a, it's a learning thing. It, there's a bit of a learning curve to it, 
but I think that is just what is going to happen when you have so many diverse characters that do completely different things. So you have to just take your time and learn what you like and what you don't like. I originally thought maybe I wouldn't like Shinbi, and I end up really enjoying her by the time this match is over. And right there with Rampage jumping into my lane, that shows me that Rampage was my jungle AI for this round, at least I believe that AI was. So essentially, we're going to get into a little bit more about jungle because I find jungle so interesting, but the whole purpose is to be out in the jungle and collect buffs and then jump into different lanes and basically just give support. So it was really cool to see Rampage jump in here and really be able to kind of helped me turn the tides. Even though I had this tower pretty much on lock, Rampage was a big reason I was able to take down this tower at this point. So it really is cool to see the AI in action and see a jungle AI in action. One thing I did end up really loving about offlane was that you definitely feel a little bit tankier as these characters. And it's nice to be able to go toe to toe with another hero and be able to be the one that takes them out. So it is fun getting those kills. With the carrier, it felt a little bit more natural because they are a DPS and there was just a lot of movement involved and once again with offlane it goes against my nature a little bit to be up close and personal with my enemies in that regard but it is nice to get a feel of those characters and feel how tanky they are in comparison to a carry and it is just kind of fun to fight it out with another hero. And there we go, I managed to slip my character right on past defense and go straight in for the core. So I'm slowly but surely adding more to the team effort, I would like to believe. But this was a very successful run with Shimbi. I did end up really enjoy Shimbi's movesets and I'm happy I chose that character as my first offlane character because I do feel like I learned Shinbi fairly quickly and she was fairly fun to play. So I'll still give other offlaners chances in the future just to see if maybe I do like one more than I like Shinbi. But I am very happy with Shinbi being my first offlane choice. I had a lot of fun during this round. And moving on to mid lane, mid lane does exactly what it says on the box. When you play as mid lane, your whole job is to control that middle lane. And from my understanding, you are essentially another solo build, maybe not as much as the off lane because the off lane is very tanky, but mid lane, you are expected to be able to hold your own with support from jungle when they decide to drop in after they have enough buffs or a carry or a support as needed but mid lane you are expected to hold your own and we are going to be playing mid lane as Gideon. Gideon is that tutorial character that we played as with the cool gravity powers. So we are going to be testing out Gideon. He does seem to be a popular player from what I am seeing in player rankings. So it might be worth a go to really get good with Gideon basically. Now I have developed a habit of going straight for the right click as my first power that I choose. Don't really know if that's a good or a bad thing. Once again, my mindset is that if I have the left click and the right click together, I can spam them when I get stressed out. So that is what I'm going to continue doing for the near future until someone presents me with a better idea. So one of the fun things about Gideon that immediately drew me to his character is that he does have a plethora of long range abilities. I mean, just watch him drop that rock on Countess. I love that. That is one of the things that really attracted me to Revenant the first time that I was playing because that little bit more long range style did initially feel much more comfortable to me. So I feel like I adapted to Gideon definitely better than I did Shinbi and oddly enough better than I did Murdoch, but I do feel like I just didn't take to Murdoch's abilities, which is natural there are 30 different characters 30 different heroes to choose from even if two heroes exist in the same class you might just not like one of those heroes abilities and that's completely okay i learned my lesson with murdoch he's a 
beginner level hero, but I did end up having much more fun playing Revenant, who is a more advanced character. So even if you do find the area that you want to support from, whether it be off lane, mid lane, carrier, jungle, or support, you are still gonna want to try out the different characters in those categories in order to figure out really whose abilities you vibe with the most. Now Gideon here has probably my favorite ultimate, I guess this R ability is ultimate, has my favorite ultimate of the heroes that I have tried, and it's literally just a black hole. And I've learned this ability is great for getting rid of minions, it's great for knocking down the health of other heroes, however, do not make the same mistake that I did and think just because you open the black hole that Gideon cannot take damage, because I have been killed using the black hole ability before and it was quite embarrassing for me. Gideon has another ability that I did not showcase here because honestly, I didn't really get to test it out in a way that I felt proved my mastery of it, especially not in an AI setting, and that is Gideon is able to open these teleportation portals. And the caveat to that is that other heroes can use those portals as well. And I just feel like that wouldn't have been a beneficial use of my mana when I'm with the AI. However, if you are in a squad and you have really good communication with your Gideon, those teleportation portals are probably going to be amazing for getting behind enemy lines, taking another hero by surprise. I can definitely see the benefit in that ability if you are able to strategize with other people. Overall, I really enjoyed my time playing as Gideon. I absolutely adapted to Gideon better than I did Shinbi, who is a close range character. It felt a little bit like playing Revenant all over again. Of course, they do have two completely different purposes when they are in a match, but I do love that long range feel of Gideon. I really enjoy his abilities. I do feel like if you are playing in a squad, it would be really cool to strategize using Gideon's teleportation portals. So he's just a really fun character overall and definitely I can see why he's a beginner character. He's fun to play as, he's easy to understand. And definitely if you're going for midfield, I would definitely test out Gideon that first time around. For our fourth role, we are going to be jumping into jungle. Jungle is an expert level role and we're going to be playing as Kalari, who I just think looks extremely cool. Once again, I am going for that right click first. Jungle being expert level didn't make a whole lot of sense to me first time around, but really getting into the nitty gritty of it, I can see why jungle favors people who are planners who are strategists and who can play that role well while balancing the rest of the battlefield. When playing as jungle, you were expected to start off, you guessed it, in the jungle. You head straight in, grab some buffs, try to level your character as much as possible, and keep an eye on the battlefield. Keep an eye on who in your team might need help, who's slowly losing area, which towers might be in danger. And then essentially you jump out of jungle like a shadow in the night and assassinate any hero that is threatening any of your other teammates. It is a very fun role to play as, but you do have to be hyper aware of what is going on on the map while also making sure that you are buffed up enough to be able to do your job properly. And one of the coolest things about jungle that I was totally unaware of the first time I played is the permanent team buffs that are inside jungle that you could try to take down by yourself, which is what I did with Kalari here. And I feel like the AI definitely went a little bit easy on me, or you can take them down as a team because they do offer permanent buffs to the team. I believe if you take them down three times and then there is a fourth enemy that spawns in that same location, same enemy, little bit more powerful, take that down, your team has a permanent buff, and these are buffs that you have to go after very strategically because they do not spawn immediately into the match with your enemies and with the minions, you do have to wait on them to spawn, and then every time you kill one, you do have to wait for the next version, the stronger version of that buff to respawn, and by the time you reach the fourth respawn, at least in my experience, you're gonna wanna take it down with a team because at that point, it's pretty difficult to do on your own. And if you can get some team members to help you out and you get that permanent buff, 
you might be smooth sailing for the rest of the match, honestly. But overall, I do believe Kalari cured me of being afraid of close combat in this game. Kalari is such a fun character to play as. One of the abilities allows you to go camouflage, which also gives you a little bit of a health buff while that ability is active. And I just really love the way this character is built. It felt very natural to play as, actually a lot more uh, natural than Shinbei. So I think that if I am going to go for a close quarters character, it is going to be Kalari, which may end me up in the jungle more often than not. I would be really interested to see where Kalari might also fall, maybe more in the duo side of the map if I were to not want to be in the jungle, but I wanted to play as Kalari. However, from what I am seeing really is successful in the jungle. It is those assassin-like characters. And Kalari just excels at that because you can go in there, get your buffs, hit the camouflage, come out, help ambush the heroes that are currently attacking your team. And it's just a really cool strategy for a really cool character. So likely if I am gonna play Kalari in the future, I might give this character a go on the duo side, but more than likely I'm probably going to stick to jungle. And finally, we're going to be playing as support. I really enjoyed playing as Muriel for this support. I haven't tried the others just yet, and that's largely because I did not have the best exposure to support during this particular AI match, which we will get into for in a second. But Muriel has a very fun mix of offensive and defensive abilities that feel very natural. So I do think when I eventually go back to try support again, it is going to be with Muriel. However, the problem was I did not get the best introduction to support playing against the AI. So obviously when you're playing as support, your goal is to support your teammate, not be the one focused on getting kills or pushing the objective. However, with the way the AI was running during this match, my duo partner here that I'm off to the left hand side with was not pushing the objective even when we had a clear line of fire. Even when our minions were the ones controlling this left lane, the AI just would not push the objective, which tried my patience a lot and led to me getting hot-headed and led to me going forward and being the one to push the objective as support which doesn't make a lot of sense but it's literally what i felt like i had to do because the duo partner that i had in the ai was holding back so they didn't need me to heal them because they were not getting in the line of fire at all so i figured why not jump in and try to do a little bit of damage and, you know, if your support is getting more kills than you, you're either an AI or something's intrinsically wrong. And at this point, I was able to blame the AI. So I would love to give support another try, but it would definitely have to be in a PvP match. I might try AI support again. However, this did end up being my longest match of the five that I tried, purely because I could not get my duo partner to push the objective, which was a little bit exhausting trying to do that as a support when you're not really built to be doing that type of damage. But I would love to give support a shot, but it would likely once again be in a player versus player match where the other players are actually pushing the objective they actually need heals they need support so i would be much more interested in retrying muriel in a live match all right we have officially tried all five roles for predecessor and they seem pretty part of course from what I've learned with other MOBA games and how those roles are designed but it is really interesting to go into this game again and know that each character isn't necessarily pigeon held into a role perhaps characters can hold multiple roles at once but these characters were designed with a distinct purpose not just play style in mind because when I originally went into it I thought I was deciding my character based off my play style and in a way I was but another determining factor that I did not consider that now I'm thinking about is what role do I want to have in the team so it was really cool to kind of have this learning period which it literally was because I have notes on MOBA and how to play these characters and how to play these roles. Am I super efficient? 
No, because I'm still figuring out how to balance everything and every role is different and I'm still only doing the AI matches. So at this point, I only really need to know how to balance my own character, my own buffs, my own upgrades while focusing on the basics of what's going on the map. But once I start getting into more player versus player content, there's going to be a whole lot of different stressors going on between what my team is doing, what the other team is doing, still trying to manage my own character, be aware of what's going on the map. So there's a lot that I still have to learn, but I'm having a really good time doing it. I do still want to try other characters. I definitely want to give support another chance because and I, this isn't even the game's fault. I don't know how you would create an AI simulation where a support would be actually tested in a way that would matter in a PvP competition. I don't know how that would even happen because the AI just wasn't pushing. The AI didn't actually need heals or support. So I started pushing, which I really don't think is what you're supposed to do as a support, but I was getting angsty antsy at that point, but... I would love to give support another shot. But as for right now, I enjoyed all of the roles that I tried, but I definitely think I'm more comfortable with either Carrier or Jungle. Carrier, I would love to get back into Revenant. I would love to get that skin that he has that is him with a top hat. If you haven't seen it, look it up. It's so cool looking. It reminds me of like Bloodborne and I want it so bad. Um, so Carrier, I have tried it. It feels a little bit easier to adapt to. Jungle, expert role, I feel like is going to be difficult for me to adapt to when it comes to PvP because jungle is that strategist role. You are starting off in the jungle. Your job is buffs and managing the map and figuring out who needs support and jumping out of the shadows and like helping out your teammates and then going back into the jungle and then probably also worrying about other heroes that go into the jungle and trying to get fang tooth down and prime down and there's so many things going on but i honestly think my adhd brain would really enjoy playing jungle as a role competitively. So I will 100% be checking that out, but I have had a great time testing out this game. It's given me a new respect for MOBA in general, and I'm really excited to get comfortable to the point that I feel like I can start jumping into PvP matches and learning how to really play these characters, because as much time as I can spend in the AI, Figuring out different strategies that I could use. One thing I was thinking about with Gideon is because I noticed that when you are inside the black hole, you can still be attacked. What if I'm falling off one of the higher levels of the map or I'm doing um, the four, which is just like the quick step, like something to get you a little bit in air and then doing a black hole that way you're a little bit out of reach. There's a couple of things and also using his wormholes as teleportation in order to move other people across the map. There's so many things that I can strategize in my head playing against the AI, but they really don't matter because a lot of those strategies are going to rely on communication with a team. So I'm super excited to eventually jump in, play PvP, definitely going to be focusing on carry and jungle, want to give support another chance, as I said. I think I'll stay away from mid lane and off lane. I will leave those to the more heavy hitting players for now, but... I do hope that you guys have enjoyed this episode. I really hope that you'll check out Predecessor. Maybe I'll make it into a thing where we can do um, like community nights with Predecessors, set up a lobby and play against each other. I think that would be a lot of fun. But I do hope that you guys check out Predecessor. Once again, you can get it for free on the PlayStation, Xbox X and Series S and on Steam. It is free. There is cross play and it's just loads of fun to play and figure out. You are going to have a good time. And thank you once again to Omita for sponsoring this video. It means so much to be able to jump into this brand new genre and really find something that I enjoy that's outside of my normal realm. So I'm very grateful for that. And I'm grateful for you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you join me again and I'll be seeing you very soon. Bye now.